Hey everybody, it's me Jason Thomas, the insect hunter, and it's been a while since I've been able to make a video because I was just barely defending my master's thesis. I was successful, so that's awesome, and I'll be looking for jobs and starting off my career and going in other directions, so we might have some new sponsors or working on other types of projects as we move into the future, but I'll keep you guys updated on that as it comes. But today what I wanted to do is in this episode, I'm gonna give you guys my top 10 tips for collecting for an entomology course. Most of the time these are going to be at a university, but I've also heard of them happening in high schools as well. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how to be successful in these courses, but these tips can also apply for just general collectors. So make sure and stay tuned so that we can get an A and master that class. Now the first thing I want to tell you guys is I want to say that I am not encouraging you to cheat so I want you to make sure that if you are taking a class make sure that you're reading your curriculum and making sure that you're not doing something that your professor doesn't want you to do because they obviously have some goals for you to accomplish. First off I want to go through with you really quick the different phases that you'll be going through as you try to work on a collection whether it's for a course or just for fun. So the first step is collecting so that's phase one. The second is preserving and storing the insects. The third is sifting through the insects and pinning them. The fourth is labeling the insects. And the fifth is identifying the insects. And last, we're going to actually organize the insects. Tip number 10 is that if you go out and collect and you find a ton of the same thing, whether it's a ton of ants or a ton of ladybugs or it's a ton of uh, leaf hoppers, don't do the work of pinning every single one of those insects. I wouldn't say just pin one of them, I would say pin maybe two or three, that way then in case you uh, have one that doesn't look very nice, you can have the nicest looking one in your collection so you get the most points. Uh, for your grade for your collection. Tip number nine is to make usage of the website bugguide.net. I'm not telling you to do this just as your only resource. I'm saying this is a great resource to help you double check what it is you're looking at. So what I like to do when I'm identifying insects, I'm an extremely visual person and I've had professors that disagree with me on this and say you need to use the keys and obviously you do need to use the keys in some situations and you can use those but I always like to confirm some of my identifications using bugguide.net. I'm not suggesting that you post your pictures up and have a professional entomologist identify them for you because your professor's probably not going to let you do that. The professors that I've worked with in the past are fine with you looking up pictures to try and just confirm that what you have is what you think it is. But always know that if you're just going to be going off of pictures, you could be incorrect. And so the keys are always the most accurate, but sometimes the difficulty required with the keys will take you so much work that it's okay to miss a few points because you are not perfect on the identifications. My tip number eight is to make a numbering system for your labels. Um, you're gonna probably go out and collect in lots of locations and so every time you go out and collect you will assign that a number. On every insect that I got there that day I'm gonna put a small piece of paper just kind of a temporary label on there to say where I got it and when I got it so that I don't have to print off all the labels at once. You're going to put some information about the location, GPS coordinates, what day you went out there and collected there, and also some collecting notes. I have a copy of how I do my Excel sheet. I already put that in the description of the video, so you should be able to go there and download that now. Tip number seven is to go out and collect insects as much as you can on warm days. No matter where you're at, if you wanna get the most insects, you've gotta go when it's warmer because insects are gonna be flying around or active and moving around because insects are always there all year long, but you're not gonna see them because they're hiding in the ground. So unless you're gonna be digging in the ground for hours and hours and hours or lifting up logs looking for insects that are hiding, you're not gonna find as many 
but when they're out and active, that's when you want to be out collecting as much as you can. If you can get a lot of insects uh, while you're out collecting on warm days, then you can use the cooler days or rainy days to actually be pinning the insects and sifting through them because that's going to take you a long time and you're going to need time to do that anyway. So go out and collect when you can, when it's warm, and that's an important step for you to do. Tip number six is to be aware of extra credit projects. So I would specifically go and talk with my professor and ask them for ways that I could earn extra credit. Usually what this extra credit has looked like from what I've seen is if you can find certain rare insects, then you will be able to get extra credit because a lot of these professors that run these classes want these rare insects in their collection. So they will have you go out collecting and then they will keep these rare ones that you find. Probably in my last project, I would say maybe 10 to 20% of my grade um, was weighed on extra credit species. For my class, those extra credit specimens counted for like three or four, so I could go collect four common insects in Texas, or I could collect one rare one. And so I got a lot of the rare ones, so I got a ton of points. And so make sure and check on that. Tip number five is that you do not want to fall behind in your work. I've seen so many people in my classes with their insect collections where they fall behind. Don't let them just keep building up. The tendency is to go out and collect because it's so much fun. I'll be honest, I love collecting. I love going out and just collecting and sweeping and seeing what I can find. It's exciting, it's like going out and fishing and finding new things, but then you come home with this huge bag full of insects and then you have to spend hours and hours sifting through them, pinning them, looking at them, trying to figure out what things are. It's just a long process and so one of the things that I always did is I would go out and collect and then within a couple days I would try and get my insects pinned. I have to tell you that this process, the phase one, the actual collecting, which I talk about so much here on our channel, that only takes like a tenth of the time of all the rest of the stuff. You're going to be spending hours and hours pinning insects and doing those things and I know it's not the most enjoyable thing but that's what your grade is going to be based on is how well do you pin these insects and how many different insects did you find and so don't fall behind don't let those frozen specimens just build up and build up because if not you're going to have one really long day of pinning that's going to just be miserable it's going to be a pinning cram and i've seen friends do that and they'll just go in their freezer and start pulling them out and be there for 12 to 14 hours, which is not fun for me. If you enjoy that, great. You can have a great Saturday and be pinning all day. But I would say just try and do it in small increments, but that takes some planning. So that's what I would say for my tip. My tip number four is take advantage of trading. Seriously, as much as you can, you want to trade with other people because other people are going to probably collect in different places and find different insects than you. So whenever you go out collecting and you find multiple specimens, like I said earlier, you probably want to keep two or three unless it's something really cool looking or something that you know is rare, then maybe you do want to keep some more so you can trade with people. In both of the courses that I took, my professors allowed us to trade a certain number of our insects. Obviously, they wanted us to go out and collect so many ourselves. Almost always in our collections, the points are based on how diverse of insects can you find. So it's not how many ladybugs can you find? Can you find a million different types of ladybugs? No, it's can you find ladybugs? Can you find cockroaches? Can you find ants? Can you find water beetles? Can you find lice? All sorts of things. So. It's all about the variety and so if you can trade and you're allowed to do that in your class, take advantage of that and have stuff to trade and actually make friends with people in your class. A lot of folks in these classes will try and think, oh, it's a competition. I have to outcompete everybody else. If I'm helping them, then I'm hurting myself. But in reality, if you work together with others, you're gonna actually be one of the top people because you're gonna have access to a wider variety of resources and you're going to have one of the higher scores in the class. 
My tip number three for you is to collect in a wide variety of places. I've talked about this multiple times on my channel, but it is just that essential. The more places you go, the more different types of insects you're gonna find. So some examples of places you could go collecting is you can go in aquatic settings, you can go in rotting logs, under rocks, under logs, you can go sweeping in trees and bushes, go sweeping in somebody's field that has crops and stuff and they let you go sweep in there, you'll find some different insects. There's just so many different things, especially flowers are a great place to go. Flowers are awesome, there's tons of insects that live and depend on flowers, but also try different times. Try collecting in the morning versus collecting in the evening. Um, and try sweeping in your local um, grass and then also try sweeping somewhere else. So if you go on a trip, you go camping or something over a weekend, go sweep out there. You're gonna find different insects. If you're trying to find a wide diversity of insects, it's good to be a jack of all trades. And so just know how to do each different technique. And that's one of the benefits that I'm trying to provide for you with this channel is a whole bunch of different ways to go out and collect so that you can find a wide variety of insects. So collect everywhere. My tip number two is learn to pin small insects. I know I said that really weird, but that is really important because a lot of people doing insect collections think, oh, I wanna get the hugest beetle ever or whatever. I wanna get this giant Goliath beetle. Most insects are actually quite small, and so if you can learn how to point mount, which is uh, a pinning technique where you get really small insects and you attach them to a piece of paper on your pin with a little bit of glue. Hopefully we'll get one of those videos up for you guys soon here. Working with really small insects, you're gonna find a lot of diversity and most people don't wanna to have to do the work of pinning those small insects because it's a lot easier to pin a large insect than it is to point mount or to just pin a small insect. So my number one tip for an insect collection for a class is always collect. And I know this kinda of has to do with my tip number three, but Always be collecting, always have something with you so you can collect insects. What I like to do is I will usually carry around some pill bottles or just a glass jar with me. At all times, just have one with you because you will start seeing insects as you think about your collection. You'll always be looking for insects. So one day, I probably embarrassed my wife. I don't know if I did. She thinks I'm goofy anyway, so she probably didn't even care. She's just like, yeah, he's out looking for insects. So. We went on a trip for spring break out to Utah and I was just wandering around. I was like, hey, I'm gonna just go wander around the streets. Um, my wife and her parents were visiting with a person, so I was like, I'm just gonna go walk around for fun. Maybe I'll find some insects that I can't find out in Texas. So I was just walking around on the street, looking around at the ground. People probably thought I was depressed, but um, I started to see a whole bunch of insects and so I found some some pyrochorids, which are uh, called firebugs, and apparently there's a group of these species that only live in that area that I was at. So I found those and I was able to trade probably with 10 to 12 people because nobody else could get access to these insects. They were a species that could only be found in that area where I was at. So I hit the jackpot. I was like, well, these things look pretty interesting. They're cool. So I collected probably, yeah, I probably collected about 10 or 12 of them while I was out in Utah. I was carrying around in my little Ziploc bag. I probably looked super corny and nerdy, but I had those with me for a while and they were in there mating and stuff. Um, while we were driving around and stuff. So then I got them frozen and I brought them back when I came back to Texas and I was able to get them pinned and now a whole bunch of those specimens are in the Texas A&M University collection because they're really uncommon out here. They're not gonna find them out here. They're just found out in that small area of Utah and some areas of Europe. So I was able to trade with a ton of people and find those insects and probably I would say about 20% of my collection comes from just insects that I randomly stumble upon as I'm walking around or just in my house or wherever. Just They're gonna pop up all the time. And so if you are carrying around collecting equipment with you, you're gonna be getting access to those insects around you as you find them. And I even had a friend, she would just carry around her 
butterfly net everywhere with her and probably I was probably too ashamed of insects at that point that was way before the insect hunter and I probably wouldn't have done that I'd be like no I don't want people to think I'm a geeky guy but now I don't really care as much because I've been so invested in the insect hunter so those are my top 10 tips I can't guarantee you're gonna get an A in your class really a lot of this just depends on how hard you work at it and your preparation beforehand and really how organized can you be with this project because collecting insects is not easy and it takes a lot of work and I hope these tips have helped you. Let me know what tips I missed and what you guys think could be some good tips to help others that are taking these types of classes. Also, I'd love it if you guys would fill out this survey up here. I want to find out what types of videos you guys would like me to make in the future. So fill out that quick survey real quick so that we can keep tailoring things for you guys and making videos that make you guys happy. So thanks for watching this video and like and subscribe and stay tuned next time for all things insects.